hello everybody and welcome back to another segment of Cooking with Greg. And uh, I have what I think is a very, very good recipe this, this segment. It, uh, it's called Firecracker Venison Meatloaf. And it was uh, passed along to me by our good friend Joe Humphreys. Basically what you need is two pounds of ground venison, which I've got right here. And I'm gonna put it in this, in this bowl and I like to break it apart. Okay, got them broke apart. Now, first thing I'm going to add is some chili powder. And calls for uh, two tablespoons, but I'm gonna add about half of a quarter of a cup, so an eighth of a cup, and sprinkle that around all over the meat. That's the reason I break it apart. Now, we need uh, two tablespoons of McCormick Montreal steak seasoning, which I've got right here, which I didn't have right at, right at hand, but I've got it here. So we want a couple good tablespoons of that. Same thing, spread it around. And finally, about a teaspoon of black pepper. And again, this is gonna be trial and error probably the first time you can adjust these ingredients to taste after you've made it once. But I'm just pretty much going with the basic uh, recipe here. Now, we're gonna mix these and I just get right in there with my hands, which they're clean, and mix this all in by hand. And mix it good. You want to make sure that seasoning is all the way through the meat. Now, next, one egg. Got our egg right here. And that's exactly why I do it in a bowl. Keep the shell from going in there. Just gonna dribble this on top. And then, um, A1 sauce. Almost a quarter cup of that, not quite. And sprinkle that in there. And finally, I've got a half a cup of minced sweet onion here. And as most of you know, or if you don't know, they can be overbearing a little bit. So I started out with a half a cup and I'm gonna add about maybe two thirds of that. And that's another thing that you can adjust it to, to, uh, to taste later on with next time you make it. And then it's back to hand mixing it. Get that egg in there. And that egg, what that egg will do is as this cooks, it'll help it set up. It'll help this, this meatloaf set up. Because anybody that's made meatloaf will, know, will tell you the eggs are important. And this mixture is gonna go into this bag. Fits in there nice. It's gonna get sealed up. And then I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. Um, you can put it in overnight if you want and make it the next day. But I found that a couple, three hours is great plenty. So it's gonna go into the refrigerator and we'll check back in with you in a couple hours. Our meat has been in the refrigerator for almost three hours now. We're gonna take it out. And, and what this does by, by letting it sit for a while is it, it allows all those seasonings to incorporate into the meat. And that's the reason you, you let it sit for three hours or if you want it, you can leave it, you can leave it go for almost 24 hours. So here we go, we got our finished product. Now we're gonna flatten this out. And what we wanna do is kinda, we're looking for kind of a football shape on this. We want to also try and keep, you know, because there's not much, if any, fat in this venison burger, it doesn't adhere together real good, which, sometimes can be a problem for dishes like this because you want it to adhere so you can get a shape to it. And we're gonna get it out 
kind of in this oblong shape. And it's probably at least an inch thick. Maybe a little thicker than that in the center, but there's a reason. Because now I'm just going to take my hand, actually I use the back of my hand, my knuckles, and I'm going to start making what we refer to as a boat in the middle of this meaty mixture. It's really just a depression. But there's a reason why we're trying to get that depression in there. You can do it, it just, it takes a little bit of work, a little bit of time, don't be in a hurry, and make sure that you keep your meat edges sticking together. So, here's the next step. We got our depression, our little boat in there, and now I've got a cup of, of jalapenos that I've, I've diced up rather than sliced. I like the smaller pieces. Uh, they cook a little bit better. Um, it's easier to get them spread around everywhere in that little boat we made, that little depression. And again, here's where the firecracker comes in in some regard. These are just mild peppers. You can get them as spicy or hot as you want. You know, if, if you like them real hot, buy the hot ones and use those. These are mild. It's kind of like what we want, like around here, my wife especially. Now, we got some firecracker Kobe cheese here. We're going to spread that on top of the peppers in that boat. Looks good already, doesn't it? Once that's done, then we've got our next step. And uh, this is kind of the tricky part of this. We're going to roll this kind of like a meaty burrito. We're going to grab our edge down here, being careful again to make sure that we keep everything closed up. That's very important. And uh, we may get an, an example from this one a little bit later as to why that's very important. But I'll tell you right now that it's See there where it, it broke apart and you could see the cheese and the jalapenos? We don't want that because as it cooks, the cheese and everything is going to expand. So we're going to seal this up into our loaf. There's your meatloaf. But the ooey gooey ingredients are in the inside, the cheese. And a lot of the flavor. And again, just look around. Pinch it shut wherever you see a spot that may present a problem. And that looks good. So what I'm going to do now is transfer this to a glass baking dish. And uh, this will go in the oven at 375 for between 50 and 55 minutes. You can keep an eye on it um, to see if you have any leakage for one thing. Uh, not much you can do about that. It's all good in the end. Once I'm sure I have everything sealed up on this, this loaf of goodness here, I'm going to grab a glass baking dish, which I've got right here, and transfer this gently and carefully, trying to keep it from cracking open, into this glass baking dish. And perfect because this will shrink up a little bit, which will be perfect. That's a perfect fit. The last step. I've got here some barbecue sauce. I use Ben's barbecue sauce. It's sweet. It's got a little bit of bite, not much. Um, use your preferred kind of barbecue sauce that you like. And I'm going to coat the top of this pretty good. You just need to really dribble it on the top. It'll run down the sides. I would say somewhere close to, maybe close to a third of a cup, because you really want it to cover the top of that. There we go. Perfect. And this is going to go into the oven, 375 degrees, between 50 and 55 minutes. You'll be able to tell it'll shrink up. 
Hopefully there won't be any cheese oozing out, but if there is, that just goes with the territory. That doesn't make it bad, it just makes it better. It's been just about 55 minutes. I took a peek at the firecracker venison meatloaf. It looks great, though we did have a little situation, but it does happen. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. That's why you take your time and try and get all those little cracks in that meat pinched together. And even if you do that sometimes, you get this leakage of the cheese, but that just shows you that that cheese is thoroughly melted in the middle, and uh, I don't mind, it tastes just as good. So, we're gonna wait, we have to let this sit probably 10 to 15 minutes and firm up, uh, let some of the juices escape so that when we slice it, you know, it stays intact, it doesn't fall apart. So we'll see you in about 15 minutes with our firecracker venison meatloaf. Well, we've had our 10 to 15 minute wait, and that's the toughest 10 to 15 minutes you'll wait, waiting for this to cool down a little bit. And we're gonna slice into it here. Oh, look at this. Perfect. Look at the, look at the cheese oozing out of the center of that. This is, this is one of those, th these dishes. This is meatloaf. This would go very well, and we've had it, with mashed potatoes and a brown gravy. Um, any, kind of, any kind of vegetable, cooked vegetable, salad, would go well with this, but th the jalapenos in there, the cheese, and the barbecue sauce on top, you really don't need ketchup. You really don't. And that's it for this installment of Cooking with Greg. We'll see you again in about a month.